Hello, I'm Deepika Delminico and I'm a naturopath practicing for the last 18 years in Melbourne and Sydney, Australia. For the last 15 years I've been practicing Aya Shakti Ayurveda in my practice. I had my own experience of Aya Shakti Ayurveda when I had a fertility issue. At the age of 30, my cycles suddenly stopped and whilst travelling in India, I was recommended to visit an Aya Shakti centre where I consulted with Dr Naram. I took the treatment, the herbs followed all the advice, including um, detox treatments for 12 months and my cycles returned. I went on at 36 to mother my first child and I mothered my third child at the age of 42. In my own practice, uh -huh. I see many women with reproductive mm -hmm. and infertility yes. is issues mm -hmm. from PCOD, endometriosis, mm. um, tube blockage, fibroids, all kinds of fertility issues. Mm -hmm. And many of them have often tried treatments, allopathic and other kinds of treatments for several years without good results. Mm -hmm. When they come to follow Aya Shakti treatment, mm -hmm. they have results and can conceive. I've yeah. helped many patients in my clinic with mm -hmm. all sorts of reproductive health issues, mm -hmm. hormonal imbalances, mm -hmm. fibroids, endometriosis, mm -hmm. PCOD, mm -hmm. more and more common, all mm -hmm. sorts of infertility mm -hmm. related problems. Mm -hmm. And often for several years they've tried all sorts of treatments without results until they come to learn of Aya Shakti Ayurved and the results start to happen and conception can mm. happen. Yeah. So Dr Smita Naram, mm. can you explain how in Aya Shakti Ayurved you come to treat and understand infertility related health issues? Yeah, uh, as you know Deepika, for more than 27 years we have been helping thousands and thousands of couples around the world to conceive and have a blessing of child in their yeah. life. Yeah. And today I want to share this knowledge to the world so that everyone can take help from that. So let's understand how the conception happens first. Yes. As you know, it always happens in four stages. The first one is known as follicular stage in which after fifth day of the cycle, uh, follicle stimulating hormones are stimulating uh, and maturing uh, egg in the ovaries, which matures by 15th or 16th day of the cycle. And once it is matured, it's ruptured from the ovaries. So that's the first step. Second phase, uh, tubes pick up this matured, uh, ruptured egg and pulls it into the tube where third phase happens during intercourse the semen which is entering into uterus through the cervix the sperm swims through the uterus up to the tube and enters matured egg and fertilizes and happens and the last stage this fertilized egg slowly and steadily moves through the tube into the uterus and settles in the endometrium lining where it nourishes and nurtures into the beautiful baby after nine months. Fantastic. <laughs> and so how does Aya Shakti Ayurved view the causes, understand yeah. the causes yeah. of infertility? Yeah, that's very um, interesting. From my so many years of experience, I have used a pure Ayurvedic philosophy to handle modern defined problems of infertilities mm -hmm. which are basically divided in six different different zones. The first one is the first problem always happens with the ovarian function. Mm -hmm. As you know the egg has to mature and rupture through the ovary first step. But many people have imbalances in hormone which Ayurveda specifically recognizes as rasa dhatu imbalance. As you know when we eat food the whole nutrition plasma, it, it, it transforms first into what we call as rasa dhatu. Yes. And this rasa dhatu is a vital tissue of the body 
straight away nourishing endocrine and hormonal system of the body. So when there is imbalance in this, immediately hormone imbalance, ovarian function is not happening properly, PCOD, anovulation, premature menopause or sometimes uh, not enough uh, rupture like it becomes cyst, it yes. doesn't grow. Yes. So these are FSH, LH imbalance, prolactin high, all of this really falls under this rasadhatu imbalance and we ayurvedically treat them balancing rasadhatu and slowly steadily as you know from your own experience and my own experience that uh, ovaries start functioning normally yes and it it just becomes normal and produces normal egg so that's first then the second stage is tube block that's another cause mm -hmm. and because tubes again have to be cleared so that egg can be picked up and sperm can meet the egg in tube for fertilization but if that's blocked then it can't happen so tubes can be blocked essentially because of the infections in the pelvic region tubercular infection normal general infection inflammatory processes swelling everything so ayurvedically we really treat this by increasing immune system giving very specific herbs to reduce the swelling and blockages uh, infertox detox treatment mm -hmm. and then slowly and steadily the tubes can be open the third cause really is specifically connected with the uterus because from the fallopian tube the fertile egg always transfers into the uterus even the sperm has to swim through the endometrium which is through the uterus yes. so it has to be very healthy and many times uterus has fibroids endometriosis sometimes polyp sometimes abnormal shape of the uterus or it's bulky so all of these problems are according to ayurveda straight away connected with what we call as excessive mansadhatu muscle tissue specifically yes. so ayurveda believes that in the process of metabolism of the tissue formation because we eat every day and every day millions of tissues are formed and they are formed in a very specific manner in a, in a very cyclic manner so first tissue nourished is rasa then blood tissue and then muscle tissue so rasa produces all the hormones and everything through the blood it transfers connecting this same thing to the modern philosophy through the blood it these hormones are carried in the site where they are needed like they are produced in pituitary mm -hmm. and then they are brought to the site where they are needed which is ovaries so there if the hormones are not balanced then fibroids can be created so the third tissue which is really nourished after the rakta is mouser, muscle tissue any muscle tissue is not balanced it's overly nourished then body produces growth in the form of fibroids lipoma many different kinds of mm. growth and it's amazing you know you just work on this metabolism to rectify give a specific herbs which reduces excessive muscle tissue and slowly and steadily the uterus begins to become normal and the conception is then easy then the fourth thing that happens is really the mucus imbalance like uh, there's not enough mucus yes. from vagina vagina is dry cervix is dry not enough mucus that the semen or sperm can really swim so that ayurveda says it is really because of excess vata and there are fantastic treatments which reduces this vata and brings moisturizing naturally from inside the, the fifth cause is really connected with the male infertility. If the male is not having um, or it's not a good quality, if they are abnormal, then they can, cannot really fertile the egg. They can't swim up to the egg, can't fertile it. And sometimes there are some group of people like 20, 30 percent mm -hmm. who has really unknown etiology. Like they don't know why they are infertile but they can't conceive in spite of being everything normal, in that, you know, Deepika, I have seen that through Ayurvedic infertox treatments, 
they conceive really very well and very quickly. Yeah. This is a wonderful thing. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Smita. <laughs> this is such a marvellous process yeah, uh, yes. to, to bring healthy flow yes. back to is simply not flowing as nature intended. And, and bringing the life on this planet. Bringing the life. The Absolutely. beauty of the life.